number 27, Jay Patterson. Looks like they're getting the face off a bit early. We should start now. Go ahead, three, two, one, go guys. A quick face off at James N. Short Stadium and almost a fast goal, but a massive save by the Yale Bulldogs as we get underway for some Tuesday night lacrosse action. The number eight ranked Bulldogs and the Hofstra Pride are facing off. And Marcus, I'm not surprised. We had a quick face off and an even faster attack from the Pride here at their home stadium. I'm Taylor Sorley alongside Marcus Holman and welcome back to the Cross TV. The Bulldogs looking to make it six straight wins and they will draw a foul after some pressure from the white, but they keep the attack going. Great effort on the attack by Yale and I mean, what a highlight play by Max Krevsky. Getting fouled, but not giving up on the play. He gets taken down, the flag goes out, he fights for the ball, gets the pass, and Yale capitalize. I mean, that is some dedication on the offensive end there. Just an incredible effort there. <laughs> and a, just a, a really, really electric start to this game. Shots on both ends of the field. And Yale takes an early 1-0 lead. Yeah, it's the exact start you need for the Bulldogs. And Grevsky gets assist number five on the season as Yale leads one to nothing here in the first quarter. Faceoff was actually originally scheduled to be 7.02, so if you're just tuning in thinking, hey, we've got one or two minutes before the game at seven exactly, sadly, you've missed the first goal of the game. But there should be plenty more to come because this Yale offense has been lights out all year. Marcus, who are you most excited to see for the Bulldogs tonight? Yeah, it's, it's gotta be Matt Brandow, their, their quarterback at X. Um, you know, this Yale offense is putting up tremendous numbers up near the tops of the NCAA offenses across the country. And, you know, they're gonna be running a lot of, of motions and, and getting the ball to Matt through X. Um, and we'll see kind of what they have here in their first kind of settled possession. Looks like Hofstra might be in a zone defense to start. So we'll see kind of um, how Yale attacks that. Actually, my fault, they're man down. So they're playing man down right now. Yeah, there was a foul on the previous play, so the man down advantage still went towards the pride, and that's not great news after conceding the first goal. It'll be up to them to kill this penalty. That's probably a reason you also see them running a bit of zone at the moment, just trying to make sure that spaces on the field aren't open as necessarily there is a man advantage. There will be someone open for the Bulldogs more often than not in a spot like this, but a huge turnover as the ball gets away and the pride can take some time off the clock and kill the penalty. So apart from that early goal, good defense from Hofstra and now they have a chance to try to equalize. Yeah, big stop there on the man down to get some confidence for that defense early. You know, coming into this game, I spoke with Coach Shea yesterday. You know, Yale's dealing with a couple injuries on the offensive end that actually doesn't really allow them to have true lefties on their man up unit. So um, he wasn't too excited about that. And you saw the turnover there, which leads to this offshore possession. So the pressure will be on on those man up situations as we continue this game. Hofstra with a chance to equalize, greatly saved That's by Paquette. That may have gone off the post, but I think it may have been carried away. Two saves potentially early on for Yale's goalie. And he's had a pretty strong start to the night. Strong start for Paquette. We'll see if he can keep that momentum rolling. As Hofstra settles in here again, looking for some high picks on the wing. We'll see if they can uh, get this offensive going, offensive unit going. Yep, Yale, they're looking to shut down the heart of the offense there for Hofstra, and that's a costly turnover on a pass. It'll go the other way, and Yale now has a chance to get back on the attack. Weren't able to convert with the man-up advantage, but now at equal strength, we'll see their offense get back to work. Of course, Brando was someone we wanted to look at before the game. That was his 34th goal of the season. He's recorded 78 points in the campaign. I mean, that's an incredible number on offense. And paired alongside Carson Cool, the duo has combined for over 100 points together. If you can't shut those two down, you're probably not going to be able to beat the Bulldogs as Cole is now going to be resuming possession after a nice shot by David Anderson just missed. Yeah, this, this offense just shares the ball super well. Obviously, you know, it starts with Brandau, um, you know, leading the, the country in points per game, but 
They have a lot of other threats from different positions as we see a nice save there by Hofstra in an attempt to clear. Yeah, Cole, of course, one of those other threats and almost got on the scoreboard, but Henderson makes a big save to keep it 1-0 with 11.35 to go. And it's not going to be an easy night for Henderson. He's averaging a 446 save percentage, but he's going up against one of the top offenses in the nation. And I wonder as a goal, for a goalie if that's a matchup that the goalie would be excited about or worried about because no, you got hand, to hit. you get to face the best of the best, but also you're facing the best of the best, you're going to be put to the test. Like Paquette is again, but he comes up with a third save. Dominant start for Yale's goalie. Yeah, and again, you know, spoke with both coaches yesterday, Taylor, and I think they were really excited about this matchup, right? It's late in the season, it's out of conference, so there's not really that pressure. Yale has already qualified for their conference tournament. You know, Hofstra has some work to do in the next couple weeks as they play Stony Brook and Hampton. So kind of a, an opportunity where you can test some things out, play loose. You know, and again, if you're Hofstra, you have nothing to lose. You're home, it's Tuesday night. You know, Yale's coming off a big comeback victory, so you might be able to catch them, you know, on an off night and, and get a big upset win here. Yeah, it would be a huge upset for Hofstra if they're able to take the win. Good save, and Yale trying to keep on the attack with the loose ball. It's going to go back to one of the Hofstra defenders, and Pride will get a chance to turn it around. But yeah, I think a win against Yale would be massive for Hofstra. You mentioned they've got some tough conference matchups with a chance to make the conference tournament, and a win against Yale could give them the confidence boost and momentum to not just maybe make the tournament, but even set up a Cinderella type of run. And sometimes an upset win is all you need to go far. I mean, if you look at men's basketball, NC State winning their conference and getting to the Final Four as a result. It will be Hofstra, uh, Hofstra will find it very hard to replicate that. But if they could stop one of the top 10 teams in the nation, the sky may be the limit. And that's why the Bulldogs don't want to get complacent, even though they're already proving they're among the best of the best. And that's why they want to stay strong on defense with this early lead. That's a rough challenge. The ball's going to get loose. And it's going to stay with Hofstra, but good effort just to hold on to the ball for Hofstra. The shot clock is going to continue to wind down with 9.30 to go. Love that individual defense on ball. I'm not quite sure that was a push, but ball to lie, and Yale's able to get the stop. Yeah, Paquette with another save, fourth of the evening for the Yale goalie. Yeah, it looks like the defense helped out Paquette a little, but still up to the goalie to make the play in the net. And yeah, a dominant night so far. And he's honestly stealing the show more so than some of the Bulldogs' elite attackers. Well, Paquette's had a pretty solid season. He's averaging 13 goals conceded the game with a 480 save percentage. But all that matters is every single individual game. And so far, he's got a 100 save percentage and he's going to be looking to keep it as long as he can. As the ball's going to get away, a chance from up top, shoots and scores! Nice long range, well more so mid-range effort from Brandau, and that's a first quarter brace. Matt Brandau with the ground ball, a little hesitation to kind of hold the defense here, and then sets his feet and just rips it near side. Again, that is why he leads the country in points per game. This kid can do it all. He can score, he can feed. He's broken every single Yale scoring record. And I think that'll be the first of many tonight for Matt Brandau. Yeah, and indeed, it's actually the second. And I would not be surprised if Brandau can complete a first quarter hat trick if Yale find another good attack. Through a total of 11 games played, he's averaged a hat trick a game alongside four assists per game. It's clear the offense runs through him, and when he's having a good night, well, good luck to any opposing defense. Now the Bulldogs will be bringing it around the back. Starting this new attack is their number three, Peter Moynihan. He's gonna wrap around, won't find a pass up close, so they'll bring it back up top and slow things down. Passed around the back. And again, still got time on the shot clock to work this attack. The pass won't find a target up close. They were making some runs to the middle, but they couldn't find anything. And as a loose ball is missed by a Bulldog, we've got Hofstra with a chance on a counterattack. They will slow things down now, but that's a big defensive stop there for the Pride. Yeah, nice job collapsing on the crease and just getting sticks in, the, in those passing lanes. And then I really love the ground ball at the midline from number 66, John Madsen. He's, he's the go-to guy on this Hofstra offense, and 
I just really love it when guys that score points are, are mixing it up in the ground ball game as well as we see a nice Top shot. 14, yes. Yeah, good shot. This time it was Sykes taking it, and it didn't require a save. It had just gone a little bit to Paquette's right. But as you mentioned, the heart of this offense, Matson resumes play for the Pride as one of the Pride players goes down. This will be a delayed penalty call. Flag on the field. Play to the middle. Shot Ooh. scored, and it's two to one. High power from long range, and Sykes making up for the miss with the first goal for Hostra. Awesome snappy release there from Justin Sykes on the crease. You see there was a flag down. It looked like the Yale defensive midi pushed the kicker. And, you know, when you see that flag down as an offensive player, you kind of have, you know, you're playing a little bit loose, right? Because you know you're going to get the ball back. And it was Griffin Turner getting underneath a really nice feed to defense. Yeah, and I mean, I imagine because you know you've got the delayed penalty. That's just music to your ears as an attacker because you know that even if you take a bad shot, you're still going to get the ball back. So maybe take a few risks, and that time the risk paid off for the Pride, and it's now 2-1 to one with Sykes reporting goal number 20. Now seven minutes to go in the first quarter, and Hofstra, after a solid defense right there, will bring it back up the field. They'd love to make things tied after going down 2-0 early on. And, of course, it's still very early in the game. We're still in the first quarter, but both teams going back and forth. And the question will be whether the Pride can beat Paquette once again. He's already recorded four saves here, denying some pretty strong opportunities. Yeah, and coming into this game, speaking with Coach Shale, right, two of their faceoff guys are actually injured and not playing tonight. And whereas traditionally that's a strength for Yale, I think they came into this game around 63, 64% on the season. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out tonight. And we're 50-50 after four faceoffs so far. Yeah, and I mean, faceoffs, they're crucial to allow teams to get possession and dictate the momentum of play. So, Yale with a weakness in the circle is going to be something you want to watch out for. Hofstra brings it inside and equalizes. There was a great save earlier in the play, but that save was not able to be made this time. Great drive to the middle, and it's a goal for Hofstra. We're level at two with 6.03 to go, and look at this goal. Yeah, I really like the way right, Hofstra is attacking the middle of the field on those high wing dodges instead of settling and going underneath. Right, once you get to the middle of the field, it allows you to throw those skip passes to your teammates. And then Sykes again, just with a little hitch, and buries the rock. We're tied at two. And yeah, maybe easier to attack from the sides or from behind, but it's also easier for a goalie to stop those shots because it's harder to make a shot at a tight angle. Here's a rebound. Here's a goal. Two goals in the span of 10 seconds for the Pride, and they've taken the lead. Wow. <laughs> yeah, give the Kobe assist to number 66, John Madsen, off the faceoff. Absolutely season. let one fly from the point. Shea You'll see it here. Paquette, I think, gets a piece of it. But it kicks right to the Hofstra faceoff, man. I believe that's number 27, uh, Patterson. And he's able to just catch, and, and that'll be one of the easiest goals he ever has. Yeah, I love the term Kobe assist there because that's indeed what it was. A great shot by Madsen, arguably an even better save by Paquette. He had a drop to deny the low shot from scoring. But unfortunately for Paquette, it went right to the stick of Patterson. And he said, thank you very much to give the Pride the lead. And so they've gone from 2-0 to 3-2 in the span of two minutes. And Yale in a little bit of trouble, once again, still early on. But last time I mentioned it was early on, Hofstra was losing. So that should give you a really big taste of how quickly this game can be turned on its head and how quickly an underdog becomes a top dog. Now yeah. Hofstra playing up top. We won't have any space open yet. Good defense there from Yale. Pressure on the ball is always the way to go especially with those long sticks. That's a good move to the outside. Brings it up close, still keeps it, shoots. Shot by number 99. And that gets away. Hofstra will retain possession. And you know, I gotta say, credit for the Hofstra 99 on that play. That's Vincent McDermott. He saw an opening and he decided, hey, if they're not gonna be actively pressing me like that, I'll try to get up close for a point blank shot. Yale on the counterattack. Great defense to poke the ball loose. 
great defense. It's Henry it's Troy, number 19, we're back the other way. Big stop there for Henry Troy, and it gives the Pride a chance to go up, but quick defense in response by the Bulldogs, and they've got a dangerous counter attack. Hofstra slow them down for the time being, and that's a very careless pass that leaves it back to Hofstra, back and forth and back and forth. Here's a long shot, <laughs> and scored from long range. Cooling makes it four to two. Taylor, don't blink. We've got live <laughs> action, middle of the field, end to end. Hofstra goal hits half the season. Howitzer. by Cooley, just his second of the season. And a D Marcus, if you blink, you miss it. <laughs> Sets his feet. That might be worth two in the professional leagues. I love it. He's kind of putting the, the two point sign up there. Posture with four straight. And the boys on Long Island are riled up and feeling good. Yeah, while it won't count for two goals for the Pride, it'll certainly feel like it because now they lead by two late in the first quarter. Yale in a little bit of trouble. I still don't think that really diminishes Packett's performance so far. Six saves already. However, four shots from Hofstra have been too tough to tame. And yeah, now I the think, Bulldogs. Yeah, we, we mentioned, Taylor, this, this being an out-of-conference matchup, right? So both teams, I feel like, still kind of figuring each other out. You don't have the luxury of... You know, when you play teams in conference, you know each other so well that it just becomes such a battle and, and scouting your points are, are super detailed. I feel like with, with this, the kids are just getting up and down, they're playing. I mean, you only really have one day of prep, so it's gonna be about who can make some in-game adjustments from the coaching staffs. And, you know, again, Hofstra, as we spoke about, you know, just gotta catch fire at the right time of the season. They've got numbers here. And they'll capitalize once again, a play down the middle. And honestly, Yale, I think they may need to start defending that a bit more aggressively. The Pride keep going back to the center, and it keeps finding balls in the back of the net. Five to two lead in just the span of five minutes. It's gone from 2-0 to 5-2. And it's Sykes with the Hattie in the first half, the lefty. He's just finding space there in the middle of the field. He catches that one. You know you're gonna take a hit. But guess what, big fella? It doesn't hurt that bad when you put it in the back of the net. Nice job on number 14 there. Yeah, the pain certainly is deadened when you see the number go up by one on the score sheet. And unsurprisingly, Yale want to take a timeout and talk things over. We'll be right back after this. I think so different game on your thing. Yeah, for where I'm uh, turning on the uh, All right, stand by, guys. I, At that point, four. The how did we know we're back? Okay, stand by guys, ready? I, I, I think we're back, here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, go ahead. Well, if you're a Hofstra fan, you may have been worried about this matchup, but so far, I know you were feeling absolutely golden because that is probably the word you gotta describe the pride offense right now. 327 to go in the first quarter, five unanswered to make it 5-2, and Marcus, I mean, Yale, what do they need to do to turn this game around? Well, I think they, they need to pick it up on the defensive end a little bit, and I think they've just been, truthfully, a little sloppy uh, in the middle of the field on offense, as right on cue, sloppy, Hofstra turns the ball over after a face-off win. Yeah, and you don't want to lose possession like that, especially when you've been on fire on the attack. Hofstra have taken 13 shots, 11 of them have been on target, and five of them have counted for goals as Paquette was not able to save all the shots that were headed his way. On contrast, Yale have only had six shots in total, three of them on target, two of them 
finding the back of the net. Welcome back to Lacrosse TV. It's our CAA matchup of the week between the Hofstra Pride and Yale Bulldogs. A top 10 team in the nation is looking to avoid an upset, but so far, we may have upset alert late in the first quarter. Still plenty of time for the Bulldogs to make a comeback. Big effort on the defensive end to stop that attack and the Pride get back on top of it. I think that's Henderson's second save of the night. That was an awesome save after a really solid offensive possession by Yale, getting the ball through X, attacking a short stick. Henderson comes up big, and that's where you're gonna need. If, if you wanna upset a team that's maybe a little bit out of your out of your caliber, you're gonna need your goalie to steal one, two, maybe three shots. So definitely a big confidence booster there for him. Yeah, and every save is gonna be important in a close matchup like this. And even though Yale are trailing, they're only trailing by three thanks to the great efforts by Paquette in the net. And if Yale can make a comeback, and it, it remains this close at the end, they'll have to thank the 28 for keeping them within reach at this stage of the game and, of course, later on. However, the Pride are looking to find a few more goals, and it looks like Yale are doing a better job of defending the middle. That shot was close, but ricochets away. Hofstra hold on to the ball. I believe taking the shot was Jones, and that wasn't too far off. Yeah, Turner and Jones on that righty two-man wing. They have really good chemistry together. Hofstra second and third leading scorers behind Madsen. So we'll see if they continue to operate. Looks like Turner's getting the pole, which is Jack Stusen, number 10 on Yale, their best cover guy. Ooh, Ooh. tough defensive play, a good shot, and it's going to go to the Bulldogs. Great effort on the loose ball, beating the man as it goes out of bounds. That's a great hustle play on defense, and the Bulldogs will end the Pride's pressure for now. Yeah, just a really, really great hustle play. I mean, that is honestly part of that Yale DNA. Um, you know, remember, this is a team that won the national championship in 2018. This is a program that Coach Andy Shea has just done a phenomenal job with. Brand new facilities. They have a lot of momentum right now as a program. And it's because of that kind of Yale DNA. They dive out shots. They do the little things right. And, you know, it's just kind of... I think they paved the way for a lot of other teams as, as kind of a staple of doing those hustle plays. And now Yale looking to continue on the attack. Shot down the middle, and the scoring drought comes to a close. Good long-range effort by Yale's number three to make it 5-3 late in the first quarter for Peter Moynihan. That's goal number seven on the season. Yeah, Moynihan just with an awesome sweep to the middle of the field. Again, just kind of showing Yale's potent offense. They're able to transfer that ball through X. You see Brandau just being a move it on guy there, but not a great approach by Hofstra's defensive midfielder there, and Moynihan takes advantage. Yeah, and the second defender alongside the midfielder was shoved away with a very well-placed screen by the Bulldogs, allowing a wide open window. Off the Brandau assist, Moynihan makes it 5-3, but bad news, a player is down. It looks like Delaney. I'm Taylor Sorley alongside Marcus Holman, and it's been fun covering some CAA lacrosse this year, but what I'll certainly say as play resumes is that this is a matchup I've been really looking forward to. Oh my goodness, that's a goal in just five seconds. Six to three for Hofstra. And Madsen with a missile. We saw him go low earlier on that fast break shot that was saved by Paquette. This time he comes back with the three-quarter. Drops the hands and goes top cheese. We love that. Can you see it? He's feeling himself after that top right rip. Yeah, I definitely think Madsen was feeling a little bit jealous. He saw Sykes with a hat trick. He saw Cooling with a long range effort. And he was probably thinking, hey, I want to get on the score sheet as well. He does so right there with that brilliant effort right out of the face off. So as Gale, or Yale had ended a five goal scoring run, they have made it right back 6-3, but Hofstra win possession and with 20 seconds to go, they might not only have the final goal of the quarter, they could make it a 7-3 lead, and that would be very demoralizing to the Bulldogs entering the break. Yeah, they've done a really nice job controlling face-offs and gives them an opportunity to put one more in before the end of the quarter here. We run down. Bring it up top. Pius in short, shot, saved, and it's going to go to the Bulldogs as the clock expires. I think that was Paquette's eighth save of the game there. 
to end the first quarter, but if not, it was also a well-defended shot. If it was on target from Rudd, I think he would have stopped it. But Hofstra already took momentum with a quick face-off and quick goal from 41 seconds to 34 seconds to make it 6-3. to three. Seven, six, So we've had a very exciting first quarter here on Lacrosse TV. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the second quarter. More action when we come back. Face-off set to go, and I will say Yale and Hofstra, they want to get back to the action immediately. These are two teams that are excited for this matchup on Lacrosse TV. Second quarter underway. I'm Taylor Storley alongside Marcus Holman bringing you the CAA Game of the Week, and oh man, it is not disappointed. Nine first quarter goals, and with 14.40 to go in the second half, or second quarter, I have a feeling we'll see quite a few more find the back of the net. Absolutely, and it's been, you know, I, I think great shooting from the Hofstra offensive players, but also dominance at the, the face-off X from Chase Patterson, winning 7 out of 10. It's allowed them to keep momentum and stack some goals on top of each other, and, you know, Yale's got to dig in, get some stops, and really kind of get their offense rolling. So Hofstra with an awesome start so far tonight at Short Stadium. And certainly at Short Stadium, you expect the Bulldogs to get back in the fight and get their offense in gear. But if the Pride can really extend this advantage, it'll be tough for the Bulldogs to make a comeback. Now playing it down the left-hand side, bring it up close. The ball is tipped away, and that's an easy pickup by Paquette. Doesn't even need to worry about a shot off in that play. The defense doing a good job of shutting down the Pride for now, and the Bulldogs looking to take it the other way. And you had mentioned, Marcus, that they need to get some shots on the board, and indeed they do. Eight in total, five on goal for the Bulldogs in the first quarter, compared to a current total of 17 by Hofstra, with 13 of them on target. There's a shot that'll find the back of the net. Nice effort, and I think Henderson was not ready for Brandau to take a shot, and because of it, he gets a hat trick. <laughs> well, Henderson should be ready for Brandau. This kid is an absolute weapon from behind the cage. He's so good at playing those angles. And you can see there, it's not like he really squares up and isos his guy, right? He's just moving his feet off the ball. He catches it. His, his defender has a bad angle, and he's able to just turn the corner and sting that top right post. That's Matt Brandau closing in on the Ivy League all-time points record currently held by Rob Pinnell. Yeah, I mean, and that angle for his shot was just wild. That's such a difficult play to make. And you could even argue it's relatively easy for a goalie to keep an eye on, but just perfect placement from Brandau. And he's got himself yet another hat trick here in the first half. And don't be surprised if he scores a few more times. The Pride now on the attack. They've won nine of the 12 face-offs. Earlier in the game, we had mentioned through the first four face-offs, it was 2-2. They've won six of the next seven. That is dominance in the circle, and it's allowed Hofstra to dictate the pace of play. Yeah, a little bit of a referee discussion here. I'm pretty sure that was a pass from Griffin Turner. Yeah, I know that Hofstra fans are hoping for some home cooking here on Long Island, but... Griffin Turner made a really nice rollback move in the middle of the field, and he was looking for his boy Madsen. I thought maybe he could have let that shot fly, but either way, another turnover for Hofstra. Now Yale can try to stack goals together, right? This is what you need to do if you want to come back and, and get involved in this game. The Bulldogs open the game with two straight goals. They'd love to go back to back to make it a one goal margin. Here's a long range effort. It's stopped by Henderson, his third save of the game. Nice job from Hofstra's number one, looking to defend the lead with a good play that time, and the Pride will bring it back up. That was the 10th shot of the game for Yale, and they're finally finding some more success on offense. And now Hofstra have to be worried, because they just had committed their sixth turnover on the previous possession. Those turnovers are going to allow the Bulldogs to get back into this fight. Yeah, Henderson with a huge timely save there. He was staring down the barrel of Cole Cashin's lefty shot from about 12 yards in the middle of the field. And those are the big saves that you're gonna need. So let's see what the Pride can do on this attack. There's 11.30 left in the half. Here's a long range effort. 
And that is a great save by Paquette. Apart from those goals, he has been on fire. And while obviously apart from conceding goals, a goalie is going to be doing well, but he's already recorded eight saves here in the first half. Hofstra could have had an even better lead if it wasn't for the efforts of the 28. Yeah, Paquette, great save. I'm sure he's wishing he could have maybe thrown a better outlet pass to number 10, Jack Stews, and that would have led to a transition opportunity for Yale for sure. But Yale's able to retain possession after a legal procedure call, I think, in the middle of the field. You see Stews and leaking out. I think Paquette just threw it a little bit behind him. So now here comes Yale on a brand new attack. We've got 11 minutes to play here in the half. Here's a good cut to the outside, but not enough room to take the shot. So Yale, from almost the halfway part of the field, are gonna bring it up close. Now they'll bring it behind the net. They're looking for some cuts to the inside. Now they'll wind up a long range effort. It misses and will stay with the Bulldogs. That's good positioning to keep the play there alive by Brando. Not a bad effort by Kraveski, who had the opening assist. Yeah, great backdoor cut and look. And a scoring opportunity for Yale, but they missed the cage and they turn it over. Oh, the ball got loose, but they pick it right back up and find the back of the net. Two turnovers, one by the Bulldogs, and then an even costlier one by the Pride. Open the window, and it's Anderson who heads inside with his first goal of the game. It's six to five. And guess who picks the ground ball? You know who, number 41. Matt Brando, just doing everything to get his team back in the mix here. We saw him score a goal a couple possessions ago. He's had an assist opportunity previous. There he picks up the ground ball. An easy assist, an easy finish by David Anderson. Yeah, and I mean, the goal is never safe when Brando's on the attack. It's also never safe with Hofstra on these very strong counterattacks off the faceoff. They get another shot and now a brand new possession here once we immediately resume and I gotta say that's pretty impressive though from the pride they can see the goal but send everyone forward to instantly put all the pressure on the Bulldogs defense and they barely defend that shot but now the pride will continue this attack with 10-10 to go in the half slowing things down is Hofstra's number two Jones he's already reported an assist today has converted on any of his three shots Now Hostra up top looking to set things up. Turner gets a screen. Long range effort, saved. And good job by Paquette to keep it in front of him. And he can't send a pass far up the field due to the pressure from the pride. But the Bulldogs are doing a good job of getting past this defense. And here they come with a potential counterattack. They'd love to equalize it. It'll be the first time we have a tied game since back with seven minutes in the first quarter. Yeah, Paquette doing a really nice job. Getting down to those low shots, kind of flopping low. It'll be interesting to see if maybe Hofstra mixes their shots up. We saw Madsen, right, hit that top right corner. So, ooh, and there we go. Yeah. Speaking of top corners, Anderson again from Brandau. We're tied up. That's great movement by the Bulldogs to open it up, and Anderson gets in the right spot. If you look at this replay, I mean, what a pass by Brandau. Great two-man game on the wing. Right, the two-man game, and, <laughs> and Anderson says, that's stinky, because he's hitting the top cheese. Love it. The two-man game has definitely become more popular in field lacrosse, right? Very popular amongst our Canadian brethren in the box lacrosse style, right? Because if you set a great pick, you, you're going to bring a third defenseman as a slide, and you have an easy feeding lane, just like you saw there. The shot will ricochet out wide. It'll stay with Hofstra. Once again, they win the faceoff and quickly jump on the counterattack. But yeah, that was such a well-executed play for the Bulldogs. And because you need to make sure that you're not giving any open space to Brandau, they leave Anderson wide open for his second goal of the night. Yeah, now, now here. Sorry to cut you off, Taylor. I think. A theme that I'm seeing I think Yale can adjust is, is their face-off strategy. They're getting popped forward, and I think Hofstra's had three, four chances right off the face-off to score. So it'll be interesting, right? I think a halftime adjustment for them is to just go more defensive. If you're going to lose the face-off, don't lose it, you know, in a defensive um, kind of way. You know, lose it so the 
you know, the Hofstra guy has to go back in his kind of defensive line. That shot just misses the pride, looking for a chance to reclaim the lead. And yeah, indeed, Marcus, they've been really struggling on the faceoff end. I think it would be smart if Yale, maybe they accept that they'll lose a faceoff, but all they then need to do is if they're set up on defense is force a quick turnover or fight and make a strong stop, and then they'll be able to bring it back up top. And the more times that Yale can get their offense in possession, the more likely they are to get back on the score sheet. And while Henderson's made some big saves, he's only found three on, not, on the nine attempts that have been on goal compared to Hofstra, who have put 15 on goal and have only found six. Here's a cut to the inside. That is another save, the tenth of the game by Paquette. And the Bulldogs will stop the pride attack for now. However, Hofstra putting a lot of pressure on the ball. And that's going to be a costly turnover. It leaves them very vulnerable. Here's the pass up top. Oh. It is he shoots. A massive play on the defensive end. A very good check that time by Yale's number 11. That saved a goal from being scored. Jack Aachen bringing the hammer on the two slide here. Oh, great hit from the side. Everything about that's legal, right? You're making a play on a guy in a scoring position. Did they throw a flag, Taylor? It seems yeah. like they might have. I didn't see it on the initial hit. Yeah, it looks like they did. And also looks like we're going to get a quick timeout for Hofstra as they begin a man advantage. And I will say, maybe that was a little too aggressive for the referees, which is kind of a shame because, honestly, I kind of agree, Marcus. I didn't really see a lot wrong on that hit. Sure, it was a bit hard, but, I mean, what is Jack Hawkins supposed to do? Let him take the shot? <laughs> exactly. Well, and if you're a coach, too, right? If you're Coach Shea, you know, you're okay with those penalties. Welcome back to Lacrosse TV. A very, very good defensive play by Jack Hawkins, even though it was called for a foul. Coach. Hofstra get a man-up advantage from it. Certainly have to say that's a big play on the defensive end because sometimes you need to draw those fouls to keep the score where it is. But the Pride will have a chance to reclaim the lead. And Marcus, what do you think that they'll be looking to do on this penalty kill? Yeah, just got to, you know, rotate, move your feet, right? And I think play fast. I think uh, when teams are good on man up, they're moving their bodies and they're just playing fast, right? Some, some teams get into a wall, right? You want to move the ball quickly, you want to move the defense, and then take a peek inside to the crease where the defense is usually better. Yeah, and if there's one thing Hofstra can do is move fast. I mean, whenever they win a faceoff, they're already in the attacking third by the time they've picked up the ball, and they have a shot on target about five seconds later. That's a shot on target to give Hofstra the lead. Seven to six with a man up. Number seven, Colton Rudd. Getting it done on the man up. And I believe he was the one, Rudd was the one who took that hit, which led to this man up opportunity, I, and I like it. If you're gonna foul me, I'm gonna get back up, and I'm gonna make you pay. Awesome up the hash jump side. Shot from the yeah, great play there by Rudd, and yeah, it had been a very nice pass from Sykes to set him up before the defense had to stop him with a pretty aggressive check. However, he gets his revenge, and Hofstra get another shot that just misses, and it will stay with the pride, but Yale does not have an answer to these quick, fast breaks off the faceoff. That is yet another great opportunity that they get two seconds once the faceoff is won. Just too, too, too many opportunities for Hofstra to score quickly off the faceoff, so again, you know, that's something maybe at halftime that Yale looks into, but Hofstra really controlling time of possession, right? I like that they're kind of being deliberate. But the, the, you know, the quicker you can kind of shorten this game down, and you keep the ball out of Matt Brown, Matt Browndale's hands, you're you're gonna set yourself up for a win here. Yeah, for sure. As Hofstra looks to build this attack, they're very quick off the faceoff, but then especially back in the lead. They'd like to take some extra time off the clock. That was going to go out of play, but actually ricocheted off of Rudd's body. Rudd is quickly there for the ground ball pickup. So Hofstra avoid a turnover, but he was in the wrong place in the wrong time after the shot, being the accidental recipient of a rebound. Colton Rudd just putting his body on the line tonight, taking hits from Yale defensemen, taking hits from his own teammates' shots. I 
love how he stays with the play and picks up the ground ball. Hofstra keeps possession. I wonder if they gave them a reset there. It seems like they're going pretty slow. I don't think they get a reset without the save where it ricocheting off the goal as there's a diving pickup. Good job to get the ball before it gets away from him by the number 33. Or sorry, no, number 32 of Lefty, or Lutfi, who then sends it back up top for Hofstra. Looking for some space, playing it out wide. And that's good defense by the Bulldogs, preventing a long-range effort for the moment. The shot clock is certainly winding down for Hofstra. There's a flag on the play, though, so the pressure is off. Good save, and now a man-up advantage coming for the pride. Taylor, you mentioned it. I, I was leaning in to say that that was going to be Yale's best defensive possession yet. But I think as the clock winds down here, we just get a little too aggressive with that stick. I think the refs are going to call a hold there on number 23, Patrick Paisano. Maybe a little bit of a, a head lift, a little flop by Rory Jones, but hey, got to do what you got to do to draw that flag. Yeah, he was aggressively defending the ball carrier, but just a little too much so. And unlike the last penalty where Yale could argue, hey, what are we supposed to do? Let him take the open shot. That one, I think, was easier to say. Yeah, that's going to lead to a man-up spot for the Pride. And with five minutes to go in the half, they could go up 8-6 to six and regain a two-goal buffer. Still looking for a chance down the middle, but Yale keeping it closed. And that's a great save. It went right to Paquette. That's his 12th of the game. Actually, 13th of the game. But that's a costly turnover. Here, no. The Bulldogs get back on top of it. Everyone was moving the wrong way. Fooled me in the booth for a quick second as the Bulldogs bring it all the way back up the field. And now they'll have a chance to quickly kill this penalty. Big save. Paquette now with 13 on the evening. Doing his part, right? making all the saves that he should. And a big kill for the Yale man down defense. Yeah, and if the Bulldogs can make the comeback, it's not going to just be the efforts of Anderson or the man who can smell a goal in Brandau. It will be the 28 who is leading that charge with his impeccably strong play and goal. I mean, I don't think he's really made a mistake all night. There is a big mistake there by the Bulldogs. Here come the Pride on the counterattack. They do lose, of course, the man advantage. It was 30 seconds and Yale was able to kill it. But as that shot goes wild, it'll stay with Hofstra on a brand new possession. Yeah, number 76, JT Roselle, getting in the mix, putting his stick out and causing the turnover on Thomas Bragg for Yale. As big as Hofstra takes a timeout. We'll see what Coach Tierney draws up for his offense. Six. Yeah, a Hofstra timeout with 3.49 to go in the half. We'll be right back with more action here on the Cross TV. 76, Hofstra. It's the CAA matchup of the week, Hofstra, Yale, and so far we could be on upset alert here at Short Stadium. I mean, seven to six for the Pride, and it isn't a fluke. They have been the stronger team. And Marcus, check this stat out: thirty shots by Hofstra here in the first half. <laughs> I love it. That's like a. In, uh, indoor professional lacrosse game stat there. You get up to 60, 65, 70 shots in a game. So as an offensive player myself, I love it. I love that they're taking chances. We talked about that, right, in out-of-conference game where you can kind of just let it fly. And I love the mentality that Coach Tierney's brought to his Hofstra team tonight. Yeah, and certainly. It can be very easy to think, oh, I have to be cautious. Oh, I have to be on the defensive end against a team as potent as Yale is on the attack. But Hofstra have taken the opposite attitude. Let's beat them at what they do best on the attack. And so far, it has been working. Hofstra setting things up. Ground ball is going to get picked up by Yale. Good defense by the Bulldogs to make a stop. So as Hofstra took the timeout, it also gave the Bulldogs a chance to talk it over. Maybe they got numbered a few changes as they get numbers here on the counter attack. They'll fire a long range effort, and it's going to go out of play. Actually, no, it's scored. <laughs> seven to seven. Wow. Very nice goal from distance, and we're tied. That's number 10, Jack Stusen. One of the best and most potent offensive long stick middies in the country. For my alma mater here in Baltimore, Gilman High School. Number 10 sets his feet, lets it fly, and ties this game at seven. That's a great effort for Yale 
to make it level. Face off this time going to be won by Hostra, but as they push them a little further away, it may be tougher for the Pride to instantly get their shot off like they had the last two face off wins. And indeed, they don't get a shot off. They instead will circle possession around and begin a slower paced attack. 2.50 to go. And of course, Marcus, we're reaching the end of the half. This will be a big chance for either team to take momentum as we hit halftime and then eventually the third quarter. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it, it, again, Hofstra's played really, really solid. Um, you know, and, and for Yale, you kind of, they almost just want to get into that halftime locker room, make some adjustments and, you know, readjust, but we'll see what they got here on this defensive possession. Hofstra bringing it around from the top. They'll play it out to their right-hand side. Yale defending their left-hand side well as it's switched all the way around by Hofstra. They've got 2-10. They'll bring it up close, but there's not enough room for the shot just yet. They haven't been afraid to let shots fly, and they've found quite a few that have made it to the back of the net. We'll see if they can find number eight on this possession. They're still looking for some room. Not a bad spin move. Looking to set open some space. That shot goes wide, and it's going to stay with the pride. 153 to go. Yale doing a better job of just playing the ball a little bit more aggressively. You see there, sticks out as they get the shot clock violation. That's a big stop for Yale's defense. Yeah, that's massive. And this probably won't be the final Hofstra possession as there's 147 to go. But Yale have a chance to get on the score sheet and try to shut down the pride entering halftime. They don't want to make a costly turnover and give Hofstra an easy chance to let the clock wind down and take the final shot of the half. But for now, the Bulldogs can take things slow as they set up a new attack. Watch out for Cool, Brandau, Anderson, and the rest of the Bulldog core to get to work. Bulldogs slowing things down as they bring it back to the midfield. They've got time to work with, 115 to go in the game clock. They'll play it up top. We're about to reach the 60 second margin until halftime. About 40 seconds or so on the shot clock. About 20 seconds separates the shot and game clocks at this stage, give or take an extra five seconds. And they're gonna keep winding down the time as Hofstra has done a good job of shutting down any lanes down the middle. They are running a zone defense, but also making sure that no one is very much wide open. As now Hofstra will bring it around the back. They've got 17 seconds to work this attack. Expect them to get a little more aggressive as they continue. Looking to the inside, playing up top. Nothing's open just yet. The shot clock, clock will expire soon. Good pressure on ball by the Pride. They won't have time to get the shot off as it's knocked away. 27 seconds, clock still running. And it's gonna fall back to Yale. Good pressure to win it back. And now they've got a chance to close out the half with the ball. 17 seconds left and counting. Long range effort, picked up by the goalie. Great save by Henderson. And now maybe a last chance, Hail Mary for a final shot to maybe take the lead entering the half or no, I think the Pride just can be content at keeping it a draw. Here's a long range shot and that's not gonna be on target. Picked up by Paquette, so we'll give him save number 14 as Jeez. we hit halftime at Schwartz Stadium. Part of these possessions. Yeah, and if you look at, look at Yale's stats, they have 15 shots and seven goals, right? So they're doing a really nice job when they get their shooting opportunities. As Patterson again, one one forward. And we get going with a Hofstra snipe from Madsen. Clearly not listening to my advice for halftime adjustments as Yale gets popped forward yet again. Hofstra goal! The goal by Madsen. Wow, what a start for Hofstra. Yeah, it feels like every single time Hofstra win a faceoff, they get an immediate shot. It took six seconds to find the first goal this time, Madsen making it eight to seven. And once again, Yale will be under pressure after this faceoff. Can it be one again? It's gonna be kicked away. Good pressure to finally now slow down Hofstra after winning the faceoff. But crucially, the Pride still win the faceoff. However, that's gonna be a turnover. Yes, Yale with good defense are gonna win the ball right back and they'll bring it up the field. Now played up close. Pass is not cleanly received. And that's tough because Yale had a very good opportunity to potentially turn and take a shot. But this defense has been relentless. However, I think it may be a man opportunity or just at least reset possession here for the Bulldogs as there's a foul on the play on the Pride. 
Yeah, just a little maybe too aggressive here. I think a slash or a trip in order. Couldn't exactly see what the referees threw the flag for, but I'm guessing one or the other. David Anderson, tough, tough go in the corner there for Yale, but they'll be man up. So yeah, big man up advantage after the yellow card was issued to Anderson. This will be a big opportunity from the Bulldogs to try to get another goal on the score sheet. So you see the five-man defense, sort of a 2-1-2 zone that they're going to be trying to run, to try to keep them quiet. But Yale are looking for the opportunity to open their scoring here in the second half and level things up after the rapid goal scored by the Pride, which has certainly been a theme tonight for Hofstra. As they're going to pass it around, but that's going to be a costly turnover. And I am sure... I mean, just take a listen to the fans at Short Stadium. Absolutely loving the defensive Ooh. stop. Great job on the man down defense. Getting a stop. Those are not only stops to help you out, but they're big momentum stops, but they can't clear it. No, they cannot. Yale you know, back on the attack. It's going to go a bit away, but Yale going to stay in possession off that strong defensive. No, they actually scored there. It's 8-8. Eight to eight. We are all tied up. Sort of the ball gone out of our view for just a second, but oh, it just pulled into the net awkwardly. It looked like that Henderson got on top of it. No, he didn't. That's a goal for Krevsky. Krevsky setting his feet in transition. Really nice job by Brandau to find him, just trailing the play. They'll tie back up at eight. New face off, and will Yale finally win one? Yes, they do. It took a while, but they come up top with a big face off as they are going to try to bring it back up the field. And I mean, Marcus, that is crucial. They just equalized the game, but now they've won their first face off since the first quarter. Yep, and that allows your offense to just get in a rhythm, take a deep breath, right? Take some, some pressure off. When you're when you're an attacker on the offensive end and, and you don't see the ball for minutes at a time, it doesn't really allow you to just get in a rhythm of the game and get into a flow. So. This is a big possession for both Yale and Hofstra, obviously. And a loose ball close to the net. And Yale are back in front, 9-8. to eight. And sometimes you need a little bit of chaos up close, and that's how a ball will find its way home. Yale does such a good job of getting the ball through X. Guess who on the finish? Number 41, <laughs> Matt Brandau. Now with a goal and an assist in this second half. Giving him seven points on the night. He leads the nation with over seven points per game. So just another night at the office for number 41 in Navy Blue. And yeah, that's the average Brandau performance. He can smell a goal up on the attack, and maybe he can sense that there is one coming. The Bulldogs get a quick turnover after losing the faceoff. They'll play it around, but as the ball gets loose, there's a big scramble for it. Will the Pride be able to get back on the counter? I think, yes, no, they've got it, and now they're on the counterattack. Now maybe Hofstra, who has a chance to score and re-equalize the game. It's the first lead that Yale has had since the first half, and they had brought things level at 7-7, but weren't able to get that first goal. They now have scored two an answer to turn us 8-7 game to 9-8. So things slowing down now for the Pride. They've got 12-17 to play here in the third quarter. And they're in control. They've held a lot more of the possession, but these last few minutes, Yale has responded brilliantly after a rough goal got conceded. And now they're playing it from the back, looking for an opportunity. Playing up top. Effort going to be saved. Another great play by Paquette, number 14 on the night with 11.50 to go in the third quarter. Another big save there for Yale. And it looks like they actually changed goalies at halftime. I think that's Hugh Conrad wearing number 38. 38 and 28. We're going to have to get confirmation on that. As Yale turns it over, Hofstra's got numbers coming back the other way. Yes, Hofstra does have the numbers, and when they do, they can be dangerous. Shot goes wide, and it should stay with the pride. 
A few changes being made as we get set to resume possession. Hofstra are so dangerous on the counterattack, but now they'll be able to slow things down to try to make it 9-9. Nine to nine. I actually wouldn't be surprised if there was a goalie change being Confirmed. made. I would be surprised that Yale ultimately made it because of the strong yeah. performance from Paquette, but maybe they're resting him because he's been so actively tested in goal. Yeah, and, and Taylor, I, I, I didn't want to mention this until halftime, but this was actually something that was pre predetermined by the Yale coaching staff. Um, you know, Coach Shea mentioned this the other night that we're going to make this change. So sticking to his guns, which I respect, but you know it's tough to pull a goalie out of a game when he has 14 saves and a half. But I commend the Yale staff to kind of stick into their game plan and we'll see what Conrad has to offer here in the second half. Yeah, Conrad has been pretty successful when he's been active. Three games played, he's only allowed a 7.65 goal average, no, 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 and he's reported a 6.32 save percentage in his stints in the net. So they're going to be hoping that his ability to stop shots is still at its peak as Hofstra begin to put some pressure on the Bulldogs once again, and Short Stadium is going to be willing them on every step of the way. He's going to get tested here as Neo goes man down after the the push with possession. And a big man up possession here for Hofstra. Just what they need to try to regain some momentum and potentially an equalizing goal. Still plenty of time to go. 15 full minutes after the final 10 minutes of the third quarter conclude. They get it behind the net, but nothing's open for now. And now the ball's going to go back to the Bulldogs. However, that's a costly pass. It's still picked up, but almost a turnover in front of the net in one of the most dangerous spots to lose the ball. And now Yale can kill the penalty. Big stop there for Yale's man down. Both man down units doing a nice job tonight. I think we're going to give the save to Conrad there. So gets his first of the evening. Get some confidence going for him moving forward in the second half. Just what they needed. A quick save to build some confidence and to kill the penalty. Here come the Bulldogs looking to extend their advantage. They're looking for their first multi-goal lead since back at the start of the game in the first quarter where they found two early goals before conceding five straight to the Pride. Now here's a cut to the inside. They open up some space. Pass will not find its target. And Yale, a scramble to keep the ball in play, and they do. So to stay on the attack with a shot clock, it's not going to be on their side. It will be winding down as they continue. Now they have it up top. Looking for a play up close. I think that had just been saved or blocked just in time after that was a very nice pass that was found from the Bulldogs. They pick up the loose ball. They're still looking for the attack. They'll bring it up top. And I think they may have a new shot clock from it. That's why they're going slow as they set up a new possession. Yeah, nice job by Yale hunting down these offensive ground balls. Those are really important to give your team multiple possessions, especially when you're not winning faceoffs. So those, every single ground ball they can get and that offensive end becomes that much more important. So now they're playing it to the back once again. The save on the previous play is credited to Henderson. He has five in the game. Question is, will he be forced to make number six? Here's a pass, shot. I think he did get number six. And the ball is going to head back to Hofstra. Good job to recover the ground ball and get back on the attack, but it's not easy at all for their defender. Sparolis dealing with some pressure, but eventually gets it above, and now the Pride have a new attack. Yeah, love the effort all over the field. Guys diving to make plays. Hofstra's able to dig in there and get a stop after a couple Yale offensive ground balls. Now their offense has got to get going, right? They've only had one goal this half, and it came right at the start from Madsen off the faceoff. They've had a couple empty possessions here. Man up, you know, save. So we'll see what they get going. I'd like to see Turner initiate from that kind of high righty wing with Jones. They've had some success. Looks like they might be going to the invert here. Yeah, it would be interesting if they try to utilize that. And again, I think Hofstra do struggle when Yale has been able to slow them down and fight for these longer offensive possessions. But it means that Hofstra are just going to have to adapt because there hasn't been a face-off in quite some time. They need other ways to put some consistently strong shots on target, and they do just that. A great wraparound on the inverted play, and it's 9-9 with 7.17 to go. Really great offense there from Hofstra. They run the two-man game, throw back. 
attack this short stick and look to the middle of the field. Great timing on the cut. A great finish by Trevor Natalie. Good to assist the whole run. Run. Whole 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 run. Yeah, and to be effective on the offense, you don't always need to be the one scoring, just being in the right spot for an assist. Ostra win the faceoff, but good pressure by Yale, slowing them down for the time being. Previous play from Rudd, that's his seventh point, and for Trevor Natalie, that is Natalie's seventh goal of the season, first goal of tonight. So here we go, Hofstra now able to slow things down, and again, thank you for joining us here on Lacrosse TV, the CAA matchup of the week. We got 15 more minutes at least of action to go here at short field. So you won't want to go anywhere when the six minutes and 40 seconds of this quarter wraps up because we still have an exciting climax and maybe even more to go because there has been very little to separate these teams on the field. Just a few saves and a few shots will be what determines who wins and who loses. Now, Hofstra bringing it up close. Here's the shot, it gets away, but it will stay with the pride. Their players in the right spot, I think on that shot, just missing that time, was the number four potentially. Hofstra now able to slow things down with 6.15 and counting to go in the quarter. But again, they want to keep things speeding up. The shot clock won't be on their side. Yep, doing a nice job controlling this possession. Again, keep the ball away from that potent Yale offense has done a really nice job with their shooting percentage tonight. So take as much time as you can. Obviously, you're doing your best to score, but also taking up some time. So that shot will reset possession to the Bulldogs. I think they had to get it off before the shot clock expired. And now here comes Yale's potent offense on the board once again. Neither team has reached the double-digit goal tally yet tonight. Yale have the opportunity to break in front and do just that. Played out to the corner. Played close behind. Not enough room for a pass to the center, but still a dangerous spot for the Bulldogs with 5.25 to go in the third corner. And now, of course, coming out of the halftime break, Yale has started to be able to match the offensive output for Hofstra, preventing a few of their quick shots off the faceoffs and being a little more productive on their longer term attacks. Now played up top for the Bulldogs, still looking for some room. He keeps himself, brings it inside, shot, and that is a <laughs> crucial goal for Yale on a very nice heads-up play by Cashion, cashing in with the 10th goal for the Bulldogs. Cashion, cashing in, I like it. Hofstra going to that zone defense, and you can see there, Cashion just kind of has that little hesitation. And he decides, hey, I'm going to split the double team here, get to the middle of the field, and finish with a little jumping twister. Scoring a goal when you're running straight at the goal like that is, is very, very difficult. So a high level of difficulty and a nice finish there. And yell has got numbers off the faceoff. Certainly do as a man goes down after some contact. Played out wide, looking for some space inside. Here's a shot, and there's another goal. And Yale, they are finally under momentum. And when this team gets taught, they are tough to stop. Cool gets on the board with his first goal of the game. Carson Cool with the smooth rollback to his strong left hand. This kid is a tremendous athlete, was a great football player in high school. I like the way he's just playing fast here. Hey, one on one, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat your rollback to my strong hand. Bury the rock, no selly. Yale just very businesslike, right? You can kind of sense their energy. You know, that hasn't been great on this Tuesday evening. You can sense how excited and fired up Hofstra gets after they score, right? As the underdogs, Yale is like just kind of being the big brother right now. Like, ugh, I got to deal with my annoying little brother. As Hofstra wins another faceoff. Yeah, and that's, I think, sort of the Ivy League spirit as well with Yale, kind of keeping a cool head, keeping focused and collected. And sure, in the short term, those bursts of energy from Hofstra have been useful, but Yale on the long term, keeping calm and collective, especially when the emotions are running high, could be beneficial to avoiding an upset. But at short field, 
they still have to deal with this hometown crowd who have filled the stands here in Hepstead on this Tuesday night as Hofstra putting some good pressure on, get the ball loose, but it will be picked up by Yale. They'll keep this possession going. Yale's first two goal lead since back in the first quarter. Here's a pass the inside, won't find a target, but Yale gonna get it in a very risky spot. Goalie gets back in position just in time, but driving to the net, still gets the shot off, and still won't score, crease violation. It did find the back of the net, he just got a little too close. Yeah, one for the full send, crease dive. I'm not sure if that was Brandau, couldn't quite see exactly who that was, but a little uh, home cooking flavor there for Hofstra. Big stop. They got to get this offense back going to match pace with Yale. Yeah, with how the offense has been so far with Yale, it's probably either the 41 or the 48 on a play like that. I mean, back in the first quarter, we saw Krebski with an incredible play. After getting fouled and falling to the ground, he got back up and continued like nothing happened, finding an assist to Brando to give Yale the lead. I mean, that's still probably one of the goals of the night. That heads up play to say, even though he got a penalty, he's not gonna stop that attack and convert on the chance. Now here come the pride bringing things up close. That shot finds the back of the net and Hofstra reach double digits. It's 11-10. Griffin Turner on the high wing. I really like this kid as an initiator. He's swept a couple times, has a couple of assists. This time he decides to take the alley and just too soft. The defense there by Yale. You know, those are the shots that you kind of want to give up, right? Yeah, we were able to Conrad. Yeah, Hostra able to make Yale pay. And again, they want to keep it close. Every goal matters at this stage of the game because the time on the clock is starting to wind down. We've got two minutes and 50 seconds until we reach what will be a crucial fourth quarter. We're there, it'll be every single possession that counts. And Hostra have got a chance to try to equalize. And I know they'd love to get on another quick run. They've scored just three goals here in the third quarter. Since the first quarter, they've been outscored eight to four by the Bulldogs. Yale's been more consistent as of late, but if Hofstra wants to make the upset happen, they need to find that consistency and once again have a couple offensive explosions. Patterson now 18 of 23 at the X, really dominating his craft tonight. An impressive performance. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, when you're able to get a percentage that high against anyone, it's useful, but doing it in a matchup like this against a top team in the nation, granted, they are missing their top guy for face-offs, but that's still an impressive face-off tally. I mean, you don't always get in a position to win 19 of 24 face-offs. I mean, that's been a reason that Hofstra have been such, such strengths here in their offensive categories including the time of possession and, of course, the shots in total as they will recycle and turn the ball over to Yale. I think they were running low on the shot clock potentially and just a wayward pass benefits the Bulldogs. So here comes Yale going back on the counterattack. They lead by one. And again, they can slow things down. They've got about 20 seconds between the shot clock and game clock here. This won't be the last attack of the quarter. That'll probably fall to the pride pending what happens here. Even if there's a Yale goal, Hofstra have done a good job of winning those faceoffs, so they'd probably get the ball back for that final possession. But for the moment, Yale would like to extend their lead to two. They'll be running an inverted attack as they bring it around from the back and now bring it back up top. Yeah, Hofstra slinking back into that zone defense. You can see the defender on the crease, who's, who's responsible for taking any cutters. Nice ball pressure behind the cage as Yale continues to grind. And not giving them an easy pass from the back. Here's a pass to the center. Not a lot of room. A swarm of pride defenders get the ball loose. And with 45 seconds to go, they'll get the ball back. This will certainly be the final possession of the quarter unless Hofstra makes a costly turnover or attacks a little too fast. They'll want to slow things down and then maybe speed things up with about 20 seconds to go in the clock. Speaking of, here's a turnover and Yale is going to get back on top of it. They weren't able to escape the halfway part of the field, but with a man down, the clock will be stopped, and I think Hofstra may be getting the ball right back. Oh my goodness, huge hit. This is like Ray Lewis 
Coming across the middle here. Holy moly. That's going to get called every time, no matter if I don't think it's a penalty or not. Refs are definitely on the hunt for those high hits, especially with defensive, defenseless players. It's just going to be a matter of how much they lock this penalty in for. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even see it on the initial play. I was too focused watching the ball, and that was a massive hit by yeah, Solberg. Solberg. Yeah, and I mean, and listen, Yale can complain about the penalty, but as a friend of mine, Bruce Worsniak, likes to say, you can't argue with City Hall. And on a play like that, that's going to be a penalty every single time. A full-minute penalty for an illegal, illegal body check is the ruling. So with 24 seconds to go in the third quarter, 25.8 actually on the clock, here comes an attack from the Bulldogs to try to make it 11-11 with the man up. Yeah, and so in lacrosse, if you're man up and the quarter ends, at the collegiate level, you maintain possession, so there is no face-off. But if I'm Hofstra here and I've been winning a lot of face-offs, I'm going to try and score here as quickly as possible and, and try to get another face-off in, but seems like they're content to hold it. I also understand that strategy, right? You get a free possession coming out of the quarter and they'll be man up to start the fourth. So couldn't ask for a better way to start the quarter. Man up, down by one with a chance to take down the number eight ranked Yale Bulldogs as we head into the fourth. Yeah, so Hofstra allowing 20 seconds to roll off the clock. But as you mentioned, Marcus, they'll be starting us off. No face-off needed for the fourth quarter. It'll be a Hofstra man-up advantage here on Lacrosse TV. It's the CAA game of the week. The Bulldogs lead by one, but I know that the Pride fans are going to be hoping for an upset when we come back with more action, 15 to go. Fourth quarter set to get underway it's the caa game of the week live on lacrosse tv we're back at the james m short stadium here in hempstead new york the hofstra pride trail by one they've got a man advantage and they have been on fire throughout the entire game today and i know that their attack including that dangerous number 66 Matson, want to get on the board to get us started yeah exactly this is what you dream about if you're a Hofstra fan here, it's been a tough season, four and eight coming into this game. You've lost, you know, two or three games by one goal. And, you know, if, if outside of that locker room, probably not a lot of people believe that they would even be in this game, but here they are with the chance to score. Man up unit is humming the ball around. Let's see what they got cooking. Yeah, Hofstra's approach to this game has been pedal on the metal, aggressive on the attack, and it had paid off. 40 shots in the first three quarters. They'll probably reach 50 by the time this fourth quarter concludes. They'll be looking for shot 41 to find the back of the net. Here's the attempt. It's going to get away. Hofstra are going to pick up the rebound and continue this attack. Early in the fourth quarter, their man advantage about to run out, but that doesn't mean their possession is going to come to a close. They got a shot clock reset and a brand new chance to equalize the game. Yeah, and Conrad there on the save. Big time save. Looks like Yale's jumped into a zone now. That's pretty common with teams after a penalty has been released, right? You might bring some guys off the bench that maybe aren't the best at guarding the ball, so you hop into a zone defense. We'll see that, how Hofstra attacks this the new look for Yale. Yeah, it looks at the moment more like a 1-3-2 type of zone as there's a shot that's going to be picked up and they still have Conrad in the game. He, of course, came on for the start of the second half. That was something that Yale had planned and so far, he now has two saves and two goals allowed. Not too bad. He actually, I'm trying to think, he think it came on a few minutes into the third quarter where Paquette had conceded his eighth goal of the game. That's at least what it says on the SAT broadcast where you can check, of course, the Hofstra Stats broadcast site to keep up with the game for all the important numbers that we can't relay to you 100% of the time on screen. For instance, if you're a big fan of Krevsky and want to know how many ground balls he's picked up, well, we hadn't told you that. We'll tell you right now, he's had two in the game. He'd also like to get his second goal as Yale continues his attack after weathering the Pride's storm for the period. Here we go with the Bulldogs, working up top but not getting a lot of room to work with Hostra's defense. Bring it around the back with an inverted play. 
Bring it back out to the left-hand side, but the ball gets loose and it's going to be picked up by Hofstra. And as it keeps rolling away, that is a pretty active play on defense by Yale to knock it loose and get the ball right back. Nice job of the defensive end. Yeah, really nice play here for Hofstra. Just couldn't quite escape that ride from Yale. They tried to throw it back to their own teammate. And Yale takes full advantage and capitalizes. I just mentioned that Krevsky wanted a second goal. There it is, his third point of the game, and a long-range effort just beats Henderson, who I don't think was in the right spot for it, to make it 12 to 10 with a little over 12 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. That was assisted by who else? Matt Brandau, eight points on the night. Brandau just always seems to be involved with this Yale offense when they score. As Hofstra pops another face-off forward, that pass is knocked down. I think Hofstra will retain possession. They do, and that is a very deep breath of fresh air for Hofstra to not lose the ball after the quick face-off was defended by Yale. Maybe they've finally gotten on top of the face-off defenses because that is when where Hofstra has been the most efficient. Win a face-off, get a quick counter-attack and shot, but this time, they don't get a clean shot off. Instead, we'll have to fight for it with 12 minutes to go. And again, you still got 12 minutes to work, but time is not going to be on Hofstra's side. The more attacks they miss out on, the better of a chance Yale will have of making it six straight wins and 10 on the season. Now they'll play it around up top. Looking for a chance inside, not going to happen just yet. They'll play it out to the left-hand side. Good screen to open up some room as they bring it back up to the middle. Now passed out to the right-hand side. Here's another pick. Opens up some space. They'll bring it around the back. The shot clock won't be around forever. They do need to take a shot soon. Now looking for some space. Fires a long-range shot and scores 12 to 11. Great offense there by Hofstra. Slinging the ball around, using up a lot of the clock. And it's number 12, Trevor Natalie with a sweeping left hand move. And he puts that shot. Conrad can't get it. Big goal there by Natalie to keep Hofstra in striking distance. Yeah, Natalie gives himself enough space to fire that shot. He's got a brace, and in this important game, it's been extremely useful. That's not an easy shot to make, but he's able to beat Conrad from range as the ball's going to get loose. Hofstra won the faceoff, but it's going to fall to Yale, who will now bring it up the field with 11 minutes to go. But that doesn't mean the Pride are not going to give pressure. They are not letting them generate anything at the moment as they are still looking for some space to continue this attack. Great defense here from the Pride to try to slow Yale down, but now they'll be able to slow things down and continue and with a one goal lead, they can afford to kill a little more time off the clock. What they don't want to do is concede the ball in a careless way and give a free counterattack to Hofstra because Hofstra have been pretty efficient on those. And played around to the back. An inverted attack here as they bring him now all the way back up. Looking for a long range shot, no. Passes it away, but there's not enough room to take the shot. So he'll slow things down again. Shot clock will continue to wind down as we reach the 10 minute mark. The ball gets knocked loose, a ground ball, scramble for it, and actually play is gonna be stopped really quickly, but it's gonna go to Hofstra. Yeah, I think I think the shot clock ran out kind of in the middle of that ground ball scrum. A huge stand there for the Hofstra defense, digging their heels in, causing a turnover. Now they've got a chance to tie it up as we enter the final 10 minutes here. That short stadium on Long Island. Beautiful Tuesday evening. There's some interconference lacrosse, the only Division One game of the evening on this fine Tuesday. And we've got a great one here. And that certainly means there'll be a lot of eyes on this matchup, and not just, of course, from the fans of Hofstra and fans of Yale, but fans of the rivals who are gonna be looking ahead to those potential matchups against these strong sides. Yale will be taking on Princeton and Albany to wrap up their regular season. Two home games back in New Haven, but there'll be conference matchups for Hofstra as they take on Hampton and Stony Brook on a road trip to close out the season in Stony Brook and a final home 
town matchup at Hempstead against Hampton on Saturday. The ball's gonna get loose. Here comes a chance for Hofstra on the counter attack. That is a massive save oh by Conrad. <laughs> I mean, wow. Incredible save after he got leveled throwing the clearing pass. Boom, takes the hit, turns it over, and he's able to get right back on his feet and make this huge save. And Hofstra will keep possession, but wow, Conrad, big time. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the saves of the game. We've been talking about Paquette being the lifeblood on defense for Yale, and Conrad filling that role perfectly. A point-blank save on a one-on-one -on -one with one defender who's not in the right spot to block the shot because it was happening so fast. Here's a long shot from Hofstra, and it's saved once again. The 38 doing a great job in the net. It is a risk, as now the ball is bounced away, looking for a long-range opportunity, and Hofstra have tied it with 8.25 to go, and you can tell that they are ecstatic. Jones on the board with his first of the night. Rory Jones. On the ride back, Conrad doing a nice job on these initial shots and saves, but just struggling in the clearing game. And Jones, after he picks up this ground ball, just says, I'm gonna take this myself, drops his hands, brings it up top, and look at the celly. Let's go. Astra is tied up with number eight, Yale, on their home turf, and they are fired up about it. They certainly are, and now can they continue the momentum off a of faceoff? Hofstra pick it up, but they have to pick it up in their own half. It's going to fall to Yale, actually. But Yale don't have enough time to put a shot on target. They'll now slow it down with 8-10 to go. Could have been costly as Hofstra was not completely ready on defense as the ball got away. And now Yale with a chance to try to take the lead. Every goal matters at this stage of the game. Every possession matters. Any mistake will be capitalized on, like there was one right here. Great defense from Hofstra, but foul is called. Very crucial play, and Yale are gonna get the ball back. And I know Hofstra probably won't be too excited about that being a foul, but you can't do much about it. You just have to get back to playing defense. Here comes Yale, firing a long shot. It is going to be scored 13 to 12. 14 for Yale. Cole Cashin again scored earlier in the third quarter. It's funny, Taylor, on the broadcast, we're obviously not in attendance at Short Stadium, but you can barely tell when Yale scores the goal because of how nonchalant they are with the celebration. Again, it just seems like that kind of big brother, little brother type of game as they take the lead with under eight minutes here and just a casual celebration for Yale. Here comes Hofstra, quickly winning the faceoff, getting a shot, and they're gonna keep possession as it ultimately gets away. But indeed, Marcus, it's a team that is overflowing with emotion against a team that is cool, calm, and collected. A battle of fire and ice, if you will, conflicting personalities on the field, delivering us an instant classic here on Lacrosse TV. I mean, it's a regular season out of conference matchup between a team that's pretty much already punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament as one of the top teams in the nation and one team that's looking to build some momentum to keep their season alive and make the conference playoffs but these teams you could not tell if you were just watching this game because they have been so even throughout the entire game tonight I love it and you're seeing guys dive shots out on the end line now as we get closer to that final whistle Hofstra doing a nice job getting shooting opportunities again for Yale. Conrad's done a nice job saving the ball, but they haven't quite been able to clear it very well. It's hurt that. We'll see if they can dig in here and get a stop. Yes, it'll stay with Hofstra after that shot goes wide. They continue to put shots on target. Imagine it's similar to Halloween night. You knock on every door possible. Eventually, you'll find some candy. They've found candy 12 times out of their 31 shots on target. 12 goals, but they need one more to draw level with the Bulldogs. Yale would like to make it two more with 6, 29, 28, and 27 to go on a brand new attack after winning the ball back. Yeah, but I think if you're Yale, again, be patient unless your defender overplays you and you can get to the rack, and I think get a shot saved there. These ground balls are super important now at the end of the game. 
And they certainly are. And look at that dive to keep the ball in play. Wow. It is still so chaotic. Finally gets back to Yale. And I mean just wow as the ball now rolls almost close to halfway. Yale get back on top of it. But every single loose ball possession, you can tell these teams, they are giving it their all on the field. Here's a long-range effort. It's going to get away and stay with Yale. Good positioning by Brandau to get in front of it. I think the shot came from the 45 of Bragg, and he could not put it on target. He's had two shots, naked three, I think, now, but none of them have forced a Henderson save. And I think here we'll be taking a timeout coming up indeed. Hofstra with 545. They want to talk it over. I mean, don't go anywhere because we still have five minutes and 45 seconds. And as we saw in the first quarter, a lot can happen for the final few minutes. We'll be right back. Stay right back in 30 seconds. Here we go, 15 seconds. One is hot. One, go with the coach. Ready to, to two, stay with the coach. Here we go, and two's hot, two's hot. Both on coach, or one, just normal up. Here we go, five, four, three, two, Yale coach. One, and we are back, go Taylor. Yale, Hofstra, CAA game of the week. And this time out by the Pride is getting them focused. And they are running on vibes and good emotions. They have been locked in and fired up all day. They're going to want a big defensive stop here at the James M. Short Stadium. With Yale back on the attack, they lead by one, but still plenty of time for some late game action. Here comes Yale on this first possession after the timeout, but they don't have a lot of room to operate. A lot of good on-ball pressure from Hofstra as here's some space now being opened behind the goal. Gives them a chance to send it back up top. Yale trying to bring it inside, but nothing's open just yet. They'll play it around. Good ball distribution as they're still looking for that opportunity. Now they'll fire an effort from range. They've got a player back there ready off the rebound, and they'll keep the ball with 5.17 to go. Yeah, couldn't quite see if Henderson got a piece of that or not. But Yale doing what they do best. That's share the ball, get the ball through X. You see a lot of guys touching it. 15 to shoot. And they're going to have short time here on the shot clock to shoot as we enter under 10 seconds here. Indeed. Time winding down. They'll take wow. a long range effort and score <laughs> before the shot clock expires. They make it a two goal lead and that is a crucial play this late into the game. What an effort. Cashing in is Bragg. I mentioned earlier he hadn't had a shot on target. Well there it is. Bragg has range he can score from 15 16 plus and you saw it there that is so so critical to have a guy on your offense like that that can stretch the defense makes your unit so much harder to guard and brag with his first and very timely goal of the night and that indeed is a crucial crucial goal for the bulldogs as they now hold a 2 lead and they win a face-off too that's only their seventh of the game and so much pressure here from Hofstra's. They're trying to get a loose ball, but the Bulldogs still weathering the storm, trying to get it out of their half. And they know that they can kill some time and force Hofstra to get back on the attack. They barely miss an interception as the pass gets above the halfway line. And I mean, this is a team that is giving it their all on the defensive end of the midfield, forcing Yale to be extremely perfect in every movement to actually even get this chance to attack wow aggressive ride yeah Yale. you mentioned their composure guys doing a nice job protecting their stick from pressure and composure will help you win in fourth quarter battles yeah i mean this late in the game you need to have the emotion and energy to keep fighting but the composure to deal with pressure because if you're not situated in these situations, it's easy to make a very small mistake that proves to be so costly in a spot like this. Every goal counts, every pass counts, every possession counts with under four minutes to go. And it's going to be the pride back on the attack. Hofstra would love an upset here against Yale. And they've certainly played like a team that is looking to do it. I mentioned that they've had a lot of shots. They've had 50 in total. So... Whew. 
They're let's see if, for... let's, yeah, let's see if they have Turner initiate again. He's kind of been the guy from this high wing. Here he is with the ball. Madsen's going to be working off the ball. Let's see if Jones is out here setting a pick for him. Yes, he does. He sets a pick, giving a little bit of space. Bring it inside, slips, holds on to the ball. Picked up, but the Bulldogs are going to get back on top of it. That's a costly turnover for Hofstra and a counterattack for Yale. And now Yale can just wind Easy. some time off the clock. Yeah. Easy. You had numbers there, but clock is your friend at this point in the game. You can eat up another minute. You can take it down under two minutes here, and then essentially, if you get one more stop, the game's over. Indeed, and if you score again, you could argue the game is over, but they'd like to wind down the time just in case because Hofstra have proven they can store goals immediately off the faceoff. So they'd like to give them even less time to do that. Yeah, so this, obvious, is, it's, this is where Hofstra's zone defense is, is just tough, right? Because you can't really press out too far. You can kind of allow Yale to, to eat some clock here, but just got to dig in, get a stop, and then draw up your best play maybe after a timeout on the other end. So here comes Yale looking for some space. They'll fire wow. a shot and score. And Hofstra, that may be all Yale needed to secure victory. They're going to need a quick face-off goal for any shot of staying alive because of that long-range effort. What a goal there from the Bulldogs. Three goal lead, their largest of the night. Cashin, again, he's been really, really solid tonight with a hat trick. Kind of scored in different ways. This one was off of a re-dodge, sweeping to his right. We saw him split a double team earlier. Super impressed by his game. Number 14 for Yale with a big second half. Yeah, and that has been crucial. It's been the difference maker at the moment as Hofstra will win the faceoff and start things quickly. They've got two minutes to go, and they're going to be sending as many players forward as they can. They have to score right here for a chance to stay alive. Three goals is not an easy deficit to overcome, especially as Yale. Now we're going to be completely defensive. They know that if they get the ball back, they can try to kill the remaining clock and if they don't commit a turnover, there'll be not enough time for Hofstra to score. So it's now or never. Played up close. What a block oh, as the shot gets goodness. away. And Conrad may have just secured victory with that clutch save. 90 seconds left. Yale will bring it back forward. And they have a fresh shot clock to work with. And I think they may be getting a foul on the play. No, actually, play has continued. Everyone was just slowing down because, well, they're slowing it down. They're going to try to kill as much time as they can. Cool brings it around the goal. Obviously not going to try a shot right here. Because, again, the clock is on their side. And with yeah. a three-goal lead, that has probably secured another victory for the Bulldogs. One minute remaining. The played up close. They'll fire a quick shot, and that'll do it. 16-12. to 12, And just like that, a scare for the Bulldogs. But Brandau's fifth has sealed the deal with under 60 seconds to go. Upset alert was active for so long, but in the final 60 seconds, the Bulldogs will be able to hold on. Matt Brandau icing on the cake for Yale. Five goals, four assists. And if you wondered if he is going to slow down on his record-setting pace this season, the answer is no. He should absolutely be included in the tour and finalist discussion as one of the top five, five players in the country. He's carried Yale tonight. At times, he's, he's done a lot, right? He's always making plays whenever he has the ball. He's so efficient, and he's one of the best players in the country. Yeah, and I mean, forget being a finalist. I think he's probably the early favorite for that award as well with his incredible prowess in front of the goal. Yale's offense runs through him. And as expected, another dominant night. And as Yale gets the ball back, they're just going to kill the clock here. They don't need to score a 17th. They don't need a 10th point from Brandau. They are going to be very satisfied with what will be win number 10 on the 2024 campaign. Five wins in a row. They're undefeated at home. They're now 5-2 and two on the road. It's a heartbreaking defeat for Hofstra. They fought so well it will fall to 4-9. and nine. They're now even at a 4-4 four four home record, but you certainly can't discredit any of their performance. They took Yale to the brink, but it was the composure of the Bulldogs 
that gave them the advantage in this absolutely amazing Tuesday night matchup. Wow, what a game. Exciting from start to finish. We had everything. We had Matt Brandau, one of the best attackmen in the country, putting up nine points, scoring, assisting. We had two goalies play for Yale, both doing a really, really nice job at their craft, both with the same exact save percentage, 63.6%. And we had a Hofstra team play with a lot of energy, enthusiasm, and the spirit of the game. Two great programs going at it, Yale coming out on top.